the flow state how is the flow state being in a state of flow important and necessary to activate the sixth sense the pineal gland the third eye intuition or whatever you would like to call it so this video we are going to talk about the flow state and its significance in mastering the sixth sense so let's begin let's begin by understanding what exactly is this flow state or state of flow it is said that when we look at performance parameters like how well we are performing in whatever task that we are doing there is this small percentage a little window of a time that we reach a space in our activity that we are doing whatever it could be our work our play whatever activity we could be doing but we reach this certain space when what we are doing and us we just merge into each other and reach this space of excellence where we outperform ourselves we outperform the training that we have got we outperform ourselves physically mentally in all matters of the sense we outperform um ourselves by by far in this state of being the flow state we we melt we dissolve into the activity that we are doing so deeply that there is no sense of separation of the ego of us as a separate thing and what we are involved in as a separate thing they just seem to merge together creating this uh this very interesting space where our productivity is at the highest we are outperforming ourselves and we are in this state of complete uh excellence to give you an example of what this flow stated i'm sure you understand it by now but i'm just going to lay it out for you let's say uh a person who is uh let's say playing a sport like someone like uh, who is uh, playing a sport like cricket or baseball or whatever else there comes a point when a person is so involved in playing this game that suddenly he becomes something else like uh this this uh, indian cricketer yuvraj who hit six runs that's the maximum run kind of you can get out of one hit out of six balls in an over he hit he hit hit six runs or you can take examples in history pele when he was on the soccer field he there were there moments when he really went into this deep state of being where he was in the state of flow and he really broke all records at that point in time nearly everyone who goes to the finals in the olympics of the 100 meter dash or running kind of reaches that space and breaks all preconceived uh, uh, records of himself so this is a state when we have outperformed ourselves gone beyond our training gone beyond our body gone beyond our mind this is called the state of flow in other words uh, in the previous videos uh, in some other video i had spoken quite in detail about the brain wave states right so we had spoken about the gamma state of being where we are completely conscious the alpha state of being then we had spoken about the delta and the theta theta states of being now we are speaking about getting into a lucid state like the theta and the delta state of being right not through meditation but through complete involvement of what one is doing at that moment
right? Reaching the theta, the delta states of being, a state of being where advanced meditators go to, a state of being where we slip so deep into our consciousness that we go from being the completely conscious gamma state of being to, you know, subconscious and the unconscious layers of ourselves. Where are the mind stops to operate the way it is operating in the gamma and the alpha states and slips into this state where the mind is not in a very, very different state. It's between the subconscious and the conscious states of being that it slips into and this does not happen by the act of meditation but by involved in something so deep, by such focus, by such focus and involvement in something that you reach this theta and delta states of being without having to sit and calm yourself and meditate deep, right? So, the <clears throat> flow state is something that we experience very rarely in our daily lives. Maybe just a window of a five minute or ten minutes in the day when we are that super productive, when we are totally into it and we become it. This is a state of being which is so rare. In other words also, I spoke about the different states of meditation. I spoke about the passive state of meditation, the active state of meditation and the spontaneous state of meditation. So you reach this lucid space in the spontaneous meditation states, not when you deliberately attempt to sit and meditate but you slip into it while you are doing your day-to-day -day tasks. Right. So this intense focus, this intense focus and this level of productivity and this level state of being and this brainwave state, we reach here not by the use of our mind. One must understand that. We, this is beyond the mind. This is when time really starts to behave differently. For example, when we are involved with something so deep, we don't realize how we have gone through, let's say, uh, a whole day is gone. When we are really involved in something, it just goes by in, an, in within, within no time. Right? So time seems to warp. Or when we are involved in things that time just dissolves and within 10 minutes we are able to achieve so many things and do so many things. But you must have experienced these at different points. Let's say a person going through just about when he's driving, his car is just going to hit something or he's gotten into an accident and when the car is slipping out of way or, or out of its track, <clears throat> Time seems to slow down so much that you see everything in slow motion, right? That kind of a time warp. Or when you're so involved with something that the amount of time that you spend, it just seems like just shrunk into a small bit of time. So the state of being, the lucid state of being, the no mind state of being, the state of flow is that state where time also begins to behave differently in this space, in this state of being. This is the state, when I say it's a mindless state, let me give you examples of, let's say, uh, Newton discovered the laws of gravity, not when he was in his laboratory, but when he took off from his laboratory and finally after days, months and years, of really chasing what he wanted to chase, finding the laws of gravity, he gave it up and figured that today I am going to take a break and not focus on anything but just 
focus or on my enjoyment. So he just took his picnic basket, sat under a tree and started to for once look up at the sky, enjoy the tree, enjoy the weather and eat his apple. When he was in this no mind state and wasn't deliberately chasing anything, a goal, he just, when he was just focusing on his enjoyment, he slipped into this realization, a state, a lucid state of being, a flow state that he got into when he just realized what he was looking for. It's like same story of Archimedes, right? So when Archimedes, Okay, got really frustrated being in his laboratory, he took a break and wanted to give himself a nice bath. He wanted to sit in the bathtub and enjoy himself. You know, in the medieval uh, European times, having a bath probably was a luxury, right? So you had a bath once in a long time. So our Archimedes decided to take a break from his work, which he's been working on for decades and then take his mind off and he focused on relaxation. When he was just completely dissolved, relaxed, he put this bath water, put some incense in it and sat in it relaxed. When his mind was off what he was looking for, he suddenly came into this state, lucid state. For this little blip of a second, he just got the solution to what he was looking for. When he sat into the tub, water displaced and he just realized what he was looking for. So when I speak of the flow state, it's not a state of mind. It is a state beyond the mind. So for you to reach the flow state, if you're hoping that you are going to reach that in what you're doing as you work, right? or whatever you're occupied in in your day-to-day -day life because you're going to focus, super focus on it and you're going to reach that, that is not going to happen. For this flow state to ha occur, you need to be involved in it 110% in what you're doing. Every part of your being, your physicality, your chemicality, your spirit, your attention, your focus, everything needs to just dissolve into it. Now that state you will not achieve unless you are involved in doing something that you intrinsically enjoy, right? From the bottom of your core, you enjoy being that. Every little bee, organism within you, every little cell within you is just so happy and awake when it is there. It's in a state of super consciousness when it is there doing that. Only then will you achieve being in the flow state. Now, as I said, in our, in our uh, regular day and regular life, we hardly ever reach that flow state. The state of being, which is the flow state. Now, as I was saying also in the previous uh, video on um, uh, the lucid state and the uh, 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 different brainwave states of meditation. I also pointed out that to gain mastery over your sixth sense, the pineal gland, the third eye, Agna Chakra, or this instinct or this sixth sense, then we need to get into a state of flow in a day as many times as possible. So for that, we need to make dramatic lifestyle changes. Our choices of what we are involved in, majority of a day needs to be in activity that we are totally involved in or we enjoy doing intrinsically from the deepest parts of our being, not from our mind. It is not that, oh yeah, I have studied this and I am so and so and I am going to be doing this, reasoning it out from the mind and then choosing an activity. It's being in it 100%, being flowing with it. So the choices we make needs to be re-examined. So to really gain mastery over the sixth sense, we need a dramatic change in our lifestyles. We need to make sure a majority of our day is involved in activity that we enjoy doing, right? 
So, <clears throat> it is said advanced meditators, uh, it is said uh, uh, people like, uh, let's say, uh, enlightened people or enlightened beings or people who have gone on the spiritual path way ahead, advanced meditators, they begin to get into the state of flow uh, quite often in their daily lives, right? For this, we have taken steps to cleanse our body physically of toxins. We have figured out ways of cleansing our breathing patterns, right? Cleansing our physical being. Now we are going to think about cleansing our day-to-day -day lives from all the activity that comes from the manufacturing of the mind, right? So we will from now choose to pick some activity which we do which we get involved in as in, 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 in a day, at least for an hour to begin with, or two hours, some activity that we totally, totally, totally enjoy doing being. It could be just spending time with a baby, it could be skydiving, it could be parasailing, it could be adventure sport, it could be scuba diving, or it could be art and craft, you know, painting, music, I don't know what it is that gets you ticking, right from the bottom being, part of your being, from your gut. What gets you into that state of flow? Discover that for yourself and integrate that as a part of your daily activity. I would in fact like it to be that you are 100% of the time involved in a day-to-day -day basis in activities that really give you this joy and this thrill instead of choosing to do things because our mind has told us to do something our ego has told us to do something our situation has pushed us into doing something that we do not enjoy but we are doing nevertheless because we need to do it we believe we need to do it well this is the this is the illusion of uh, just seeing things from our two eyes or sensing our physical reality and not knowing the truth of our existence, right? That we involve ourselves in activities, majority of our living moments, in things that we do not intrinsically enjoy, like 100% deep from deep within. We do it because we are educated in the field, it's profitable, it is bringing us revenue, it is bringing us fame, it's bringing us whatever else, right? So, you know, it's like the chicken and egg story. The more you cleanse yourself and become more authentic and real, right? The more your sixth sense opens up, right? And the more your sixth sense opens up, the more you will involve yourself in activity that you enjoy and the less you will involve yourself in activities of the mind and where you are heart and your soul is not into right it's a chicken and egg story so the more you practice right choosing and doing things that you intrinsically enjoy you will get into the state of flow the more you get into the state of flow the more it will you know, it will get you to be a cleaner person, eat right, be right, exist right, breathe right, make your choices that are serving you, your ultimate goal, instead of, you know, the other way where you're making choices that you think is helping you in this physical space, but you're just going in the wrong direction sometimes. <clears throat> So, to gain mastery over the sixth sense, it is necessary, not just necessary, it's vital for you to reach this flow state or the spontaneous meditation states or the theta and delta brainwave states as many times in the day as possible. In fact, if you reach this state of being which where your sixth sense is completely open, your Agnya Chakra is open, your third eye is open, 
you will reach a state of being an observer at every point of our living experience you will just your dimension of your experience the uh, the vastness of your awareness will become will increase manifold if we allow ourselves to get into the state of being which is called as the state of flow